Hello, my name is Dr. Ann George. In this presentation, I will be discussing uh, findings on thoracic ultrasonography in patients with ARDS, or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome involves acute, diffuse, inflammatory lung injury that leads to increased pulmonary vascular permeability, increased lung weight, and loss of aerated tissue. Hallmarks of ARDS include hypoxemia and bilateral radiographic opacities. The underlying lung pathology is diffuse alveolar damage. There are many different causes and risk factors for ARDS. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. You must exclude cardiogenic pulmonary edema and alternative causes of acute hypoxemic respiratory failure with bilateral infiltrates. The Berlin definition of ARDS uh, from 2012 requires an acute onset within one week of the clinical insult or worsening respiratory status, bilateral infiltrates on chest x-ray or CT without alternative explanation, edema that's not fully explained by fluid overload or CHF, and demonstration of hypoxemia, the severity of which can be measured by assessing the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio at 5 centimeters of peak. When we use thoracic ultrasound, normally ultrasounds are not transmitted through air-filled structures and the lung parenchyma is not visible beyond the pleura. However, in injured lung, artifacts are created which can be detected by thoracic ultrasound because of changes that occur at the gas tissue interface. Parenchymal lung diseases cause interlobular septa to widen as fluid accumulates, allowing ultrasound waves to be propagated, creating beelines. The beeline pattern can help to distinguish between different causes of parenchymal disease and respiratory failure. For example, there are different beeline patterns with different pathologies. In pulmonary edema, we can see bilateral and uniformly distributed beelines without areas of sparing along with a smooth, thin pleural line. In early or atypical pneumonia, we can see unilateral patchy pattern of beelines with irregularly thickened pleura or diminished lung sliding. In ARDS, often we see bilateral beelines with areas of sparing and irregularly thickened pleura. With ARDS on ultrasound, there are many different uh, lung pathologies uh, that we can see in patients who fulfill criteria for ARDS. As mentioned previously, beelines may suggest thickened alveolar septa, but they can also represent areas of ground glass attenuation, which you might see on a CT scan. Patients with ARDS may also demonstrate areas of alveolar consolidation, which will be seen as hepatization on ultrasound, or hyperechoic artifacts resulting from air bronchograms. Sometimes patients with ARDS may also have pleural effusions. If a patient presents uh, with multiple diffuse beelines evident on ultrasound, there could be many different uh, differential diagnoses that come to mind. These include pulmonary edema caused from various different causes, uh, interstitial pneumonia or pneumonitis, diffuse parenchymal lung disease such as pulmonary fibrosis or ARDS. The following list uh, is helpful uh, in order to help distinguish between cardiogenic pulmonary edema versus ARDS uh, when you're assessing these conditions on ultrasound. Findings that support uh, the diagnosis of ARDS based on ultrasound include anterior subpleural consolidations, absence or reduction of lung sliding, spared areas of normal parenchyma, pleural line abnormalities like irregular thickened fragmented pleural lines, and non-homogeneous distribution of beelines. I'm going to be starting with the case. Uh, but just generally, uh, possible advantages of thoracic ultrasound and ARDS are many. In patients with dyspnea and respiratory failure, the physical exam and chest x-ray are sometimes of limited sensitivity and specificity to help you determine the etiology of the respiratory failure. Um, if you happen to see uh, bilateral infiltrates on chest x-ray, there are a number of different conditions that these changes could represent, including diffuse pulmonary edema, multifocal pneumonia, ARDS, or another entity. Therefore, thoracic ultrasound can be helpful to determine diagnosis and to guide management in acutely ill patients when the initial presentation may be nonspecific, and there could be a long wait for another ancillary test like a CT scan. The first case uh, is a 74-year-old lady who was post-op after a left hip revision for uh, methicillin-sensitive staph aureus infection of the hip. 
Uh, she was initially on the floor after her surgery, but was uh, transferred to the ICU with hypoxic respiratory failure, uh, initially requiring BiPAP. She gradually worsened and developed acute kidney injury and became hemodynamically unstable. Uh, she had to be intubated and was requiring pressors. This is a picture of uh, the x-ray, which demonstrated extensive bilateral airspace opacities. We went on to perform thoracic ultrasound on this patient, and the screen demonstrates um, uh, the views from several different locations across the chest wall. Um, in the upper corner, you see uh, the right anterior chest wall. Um, there's also an image of the right anterior axillary line. Um, over here is the left anterior chest wall and the left anterior axillary line. In all these views, you can see that there are diffuse B lines uh, throughout the images, suggesting that there is uh, diffuse parenchymal disease. Here are a few more views of the ultrasound. Uh, this is uh, the right costophrenic angle, and here's the left costophrenic angle. Uh, here you see the diaphragm uh, with the uh, liver border, and uh, you can see here there are some areas of consolidation. And on this side here, you do see uh, the spleen and uh, the left kidney, and then some lung curtaining uh, into the view. So definitely some uh, advantages of thoracic ultrasound uh, in a case like this is um, you do get a lot of information from the ultrasound. Um, and in this patient, actually, um, a, a diagnosis of uh, ARDS was made, and she did not actually require a CT scan. Um, so uh, with thoracic ultrasound, there's a potential to decrease radiation and contrast exposure. Um, there's decreased transport outside of the ICU for tests. It may help to expedite diagnosis and management. It's definitely less expensive than a CT scan. It's reproducible uh, if another um, user comes by and repeats the ultrasound. There's also potential for following um, the evolution of the pathology. So uh, this particular patient could be rescanned on another day to assess uh, how the ARDS is progressing. And there's also some uh, research being done uh, as to whether ultrasound can be used to titrate PEEP uh, because uh, you can demonstrate lung recruitment uh, using thoracic ultrasound. So for the conclusion of this case, um, to confirm that there was no actual cardiac etiology uh, for uh, the areas of um, interstitial pathology we were seeing, a bedside echocardiogram was done and did not explain uh, the interstitial changes or the hemodynamic instability. Uh, based on the uh, findings of the case, uh, we recommended lung protective ventilation. Um, a patient was already on pressors and she was started on antibiotics for ARDS that was presumed to be secondary to pneumonia and sepsis. Eventually, the respiratory cultures grew Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and the patient completed antibiotics uh, for hospital acquired pneumonia and was uh, eventually extubated. Thank you for your attention uh, during this presentation.